I think uh, the message is very clear. If we don't use technology effectively and wisely, then it will only amplify the problem. And this is something that we don't want to have in our education system, that's for sure. I think it's my turn now. Yeah. <laughs> Today, I'm going to talk about MS Africa, the initiative that we were talking about for the past two days. I'm not going to repeat myself or repeat what my colleagues have said earlier today, this morning, or yesterday. But we all believe that we all know from the figures and the numbers, which are not accurate in any way, shape, or form, that Africa is a young, has a young population. And this is something that needs to be addressed in all means. And the best way to do that is definitely through education. I don't, five years back, if I remember correctly, and before that, if I wanted to be in this position, I wanted to, I had to justify myself. Why do we need to use and utilize ICT in education? But I think we are beyond that stage today, because everybody knows the effect of education once it is developed correctly. And those are some of the issues that education can help in solving. And when we talk about education, we're talking about quality education that can be delivered using information technology. There are many challenges that are facing education in the African uh, nation. And uh, with our initiative, we believe that we will be able to address many of those. By having international organizations, including the African Development Bank, okay, the UNESCO, the USAID, and many other private and public sectors, NGOs, etc., they will be able to help in building this uh, momentum that is going to solve the problem of education. <clears throat> when we talk about education, as with my first slide, the main problem that we need to realize and start with is that we really don't know the size of the problem. And in order to be able to solve that problem, we need data. But not any data that is, you know, collected in an unscientific manner and managed in an unscientific manner. But we are look, looking at data that is relevant, okay, that can be collected in a timely, timely manner that can help policymakers make decisions on the spot so that they can move forward. The education management system, information system is an effective reform attempt okay, that will help decision makers move forward in their decision making in order to be able to identify the issues and the problems the moment they happen rather than after they happen. Now, in terms of MS, MS will be able to answer questions for parents, teachers, school principles, and those are important questions. If they can be answered, then we can tell that we have achieved something. Curricula departments, the supervisors and the advisors, the districts, state level officials, the national planners and policy makers, and that leads to one thing, that MS is something that starts from the nation and ends at the school that covers all aspects of people involved in this. The provision of MS Africa is a, the provision of a unified comprehensive MS for Africa that provides real, life, accurate, relevant data to assist 
in decision making. And this is something that is extremely important if we want to move forward, as I said earlier. The cycle is, starts with data collection, goes through processing, analysis, reporting, okay? And of course, goes back with the feedback in order to enhance the process once again. The stakeholders are not the students only, and are not the teachers only, and not the administrations only. It's all, everybody involved in the education system. The functionalities, we cannot think of an MS, an educational management information system, which is not comprehensive, because the moment you start losing pieces of those information, okay, your analysis will be wrong, and the data that you are going to get information from is going to be incomplete, and therefore that will be affecting your decision on the short term and the long term. And this is why you have to take all the stakeholders into consideration, you have to take all the functionalities into consideration, and you have to take you know, all the verticals that are affecting the education uh, domain directly or indirectly. The coverage. You just cannot have relevant information just by having you know, a piece of the total picture, of the whole picture. If you want to have an MS that is effective, that is helping you in making your own right decisions, that is going to help your population, okay? It has to be complete. And therefore, the coverage has to be complete. There are challenges, many challenges. We have heard about lots of them yesterday and this morning. But we have to ask ourselves all the time, is it achievable? It is doable? Do I get results if I really invest in this? I'm going to share with you now some facts and numbers from a previous experience that we have implemented that is considered one of the biggest, not in the Arab world, but worldwide. <clears throat> Those are some of the figures that has been you know, obtained from our experience in implementing a, a comprehensive educational management information system in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I'll leave it on the screen for a while while talking about the project, which is the easiest part of my presentation. <clears throat> uh, when we tried, when we engaged ourselves with the Ministry of Education in Saudi Arabia, the ministry had tried at least four times before to implement an education and management information system with multi, you know, many international organizations, and all those attempts unfortunately uh, failed. Reason being because everybody was talking about technology. Everybody thought that in order to cover 37,000 schools and more than 12 million users, you need a fat, big, huge data center. Everybody thought that the moment we get the computers and put them inside the school rooms, okay, we will be able to achieve our goal. They, everybody thought that in order to have the computers in the school rooms, okay, we will need connectivity. So if we provide connectivity to the schools and the computers, okay, then goal will be achieved. All those attempts failed. Today, I can assure you that 40%, 40% of the Saudi Arabian, of the 37,000 schools of Saudi Arabia are not connected by the Ministry of Education. Everybody thinks that the moment that we put the infrastructure in place, you know, the issue of, of uh, uh, collecting the data will be solved. And the moment some attempts, some other attempts, took that into consideration, so they focused on the issue of collecting the data. But another important factor of that was that the data was not correct. It needed cleansing. It needed management before starting analyzing it and before starting, you know, using it in the, uh, uh, in the decision-making process, before even getting a, a number that would reflect on my dashboard 
as a decision maker so that I can move with my decision forward or I decide to delay it. Now, what we have managed to do is basically identify the main challenge okay, in implementing solutions for countrywide, and that is change management. So when we talk about you know, a partnership between a private sector and, private and, and public sector, when it comes to massive deployment of this size, and massive does not need to have be 37,000. The moment you start talking about countrywide, you are talking massive to the scale of that country. And unless there is a proper partnership between the private sector and the public sector, this will never fly. And this is why, with the initiative, we took that into consideration. We thought that private-public partnership is the key to succeed with our initiative. And when we talk, this is the private sector, the public sector, the NGOs, and the, the organizations that would like to help. That will include many components. Data center, creation of data centers, and that can be localized at a country level or can be shared within a cloud, within areas uh, 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 or at, at a nation level when we speak Africa. Telco operators have to be engaged. <clears throat> the energy companies, because how can I serve a school where I don't have water and electricity. And this is why we, we brought the energy companies into on board so that they can help us with that. Professionals relation, you know, uh, specialize in training. And of course, our, our strategic partners with the hardware and the software that are needed to uh, complete our work in order to be, to be able to move forward. Now, Nothing can be done in one night, and nothing, unfortunately, nothing can be done in one year. And this is why we adopted the phased approach. And in order to be able to achieve our goal, we thought with the minimum amount of money that we were able to secure for phase one, okay, uh, we thought that the implementation is going to include seven phases that will have seven countries per phase. And the moment we do that, we had, we went, we had to go to second state, stage, which is in order to be able to select the seven countries, we had to put a, a kind of selection criteria, okay, that each country has to uh, fulfill in order to be able to join phase one. Uh, of course, uh, We are hoping that we will be able to start with the, uh, with the initiative as of January 2013. Uh, the implementation is going to start taking place. Of course, we, we started talking with uh, some ministers of education already. Some of them showed the interest, and this is why our next tour is going to start from the 15th of November visiting the individual ministries in order to do the gap analysis, the, the quick gap analysis, in order to be able to see if they fit the criteria so that we can include them in phase one. Uh, everybody was talking and asking me about the funding. How did it happen? Okay. From us, we thought that this is part of our CSR program, as I, as I mentioned earlier. We have gained good amount of money out of education, and I think we have paid back for our local uh, uh, communities, and we believe that with this we will be able to expand beyond the national boundaries of our, our existence. And with our operation in, in, uh, uh, in the Middle East and in the uh, U.S., uh, we believe that we will be able to expand also through this in the African continent. So we, we contributed big time in this initial fund, I say, as, an, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, that we thought it will be the spark that will ignite the good fire 
that will put everybody, you know, create the heat in Africa again, but this time towards education reform using ICT. Uh, we had to, of course, get some, our, some of our friends on board from the private sector. We had to get some, uh, some of the international agencies. We had to speak to the uh, telco operators, as we've said, and everybody showed interest the moment they, they thought that the money is going to be utilized in education reform for Africa.